afternoon, everyone. Glad that you're here to gather together to celebrate the life and legacy Nicole June shared. How she touched our lives, how blessed she was. It's indeed an honor to host all of you here at Center Baptist this morning. We're so grateful that we have a small part at this moment as your family gathers together with friends to celebrate the life that you had together with you. And we also remember, of course, the promise of Jesus Christ that He is the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in Him, those who are dead yet, shall she live? And we celebrate the fact that June is not gone. You know, she is still alive. And one day we will be gathered together. Let's join in prayer as we begin our service and just ask for a blessing. Father, we come. We thank you for the time that we have together just to share this time give thanks for the life of Nicole. She touched each and every one who is here. Lord, as we come into this time, comfort each heart and we fill with the, the promise from the word, the blessing, and the truths that are there. We say goodbye for a moment in time, but know that one day we will say hello forever in heaven. We look forward to the promise of your word and for that forever reunion. We give thanks and praise for it. We thank you and praise you that your love, your grace, your peace are present with us. Lord, your strength is manifest in our lives. And so Lord, as we come to this time, bless each and every one who are here. We give thanks for this. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand and join us in singing hymn number 718. Day by day.
Nicole was born in Cedar Falls, Iowa to left children on June 21, 1966. At the age of five, the family moved to Northeast Iowa and transitioned to farm life. Two years later, through the ministry of her family and Center Baptist Church in Lansing, Iowa, Nicole encountered Jesus Christ and resolved to accept his loving lordship over her life. She was then baptized in Village Creek near her church, just out in the creek. <laughs> and uh, just a few years later, all right, in her free time growing up, she enjoyed playing the piano and flute, participating in 4-H, and spending time with close friends. After high school, she attended and graduated from the University of Northwestern in 1989 with an elementary education degree. Following college, she intended to serve at Camp Four Spring for a summer of ministry that then turned into nine years of full-time Christian service. It was there at camp where she met her husband, Tom Scher, and they married on October 14, in 1995. Throughout her life, Nicole actively served by ministering to others, organizing events, helping with youth ministry, supporting caring friendships, and singing on worship teams in and outside the church. In 1999, Tom and Nicole moved to Duluth to serve at Lincoln Park Community Church, where she beautifully embraced the role of being a pastor's wife. It was during these years that God started to grow her family through the miracle of adoption. Tatiana was born in 2001, Julius joined in 2003, and Mercy joined as her final child and Christmas gift in 2006. She followed the call of ministry with Tom to Sandy Lake Church in Barnum in 2005, until transitioning into the role of an emergency foster mom with St. Louis County in 2019. In the last three years of Nicole's life, she joyfully cared for over 150 kids in need of a family and home. On November 7, 2022, Nicole won her battle against cancer, sin, and death when Jesus reached out his arms and welcomed her into his presence. She is forever safe and forever loved. Nicole is preceded in death and resurrection by her Savior Jesus Christ and her father Luster. She is survived by her husband Tom, children Tatiana, Julius, and Mercy, mother June, sisters Leslie and Kevin Friesen, and Trisha and Lee Porter, and brother Eric Shelley, and many nieces and nephews. A committal service and burial will be held in Southern Baptist here. Tom and Nicole have served Jesus sacrificially and helped others. An opportunity to give to them can be found at Gears and Co. Just search for the uh, share of the money. Scripture reading for today is from Isaiah 54. Sing. O barren one who did not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not been in labor. For the children of her, the desolate one, will be more than the children of her who is married, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent and let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you will spread abroad to the right and to the left. Your offspring will possess the nations and the people. Um, and will people the desolate cities. Fear not, for you will not be ashamed. Be not confounded, for you will not be disgraced. For you will forget the shame of your youth and the reproach of your widowhood you will remember no more. For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And the Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. The God of the whole earth he is called. For the Lord has called you like a wife, deserted and grieved in spirit, like a wife of you when she is cast off, says your God. For a brief moment I deserted you, but with great compassion I will gather you. In overwhelming anger for a moment I hid my face from you, but with everlasting love I will have compassion on you, says the Lord. Uh, this is just a little testimony time, and there are a couple that um, were prepared, and I know that uh, there's 
some of you that are from uh, this church here, you probably have a story or two um, that maybe not right now, maybe but um, maybe later you can share and um, give a little bit more of the, the insight into Nicole's um, years. But, uh, any family that would like to come or stand and just share a little bit, you're welcome to do so. Well, I'll share briefly, um, and uh, for those of you that did see the, the service live stream, this, this will sound a tidbit familiar, but it has a little bit of a, a little bit of a different ending. So stay stay tuned in here. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's been good uh, so far, and it just keeps getting better and better. We do have a, a hope and a future, and I would just like to speak briefly and, and just uh, honoring God and remembering Nicole today as the dignified dove. The dignified dove. Uh, why the dignified and why the dove? Uh, first of all, um, the Lord just opened my eyes in these last um, six months since Nicole was diagnosed uh, to how strong and how brave of a woman that God had made her to be. Um, just looking with courage in the face of sickness and um, the things that come along with uh, chemo treatments and um, just being sick, and uh, through it all, she just uh, remained very courageous. And I, I know that there were there are people who are on Facebook that uh, and, and fluent in that language that were probably up to date more than I was, even as far as what Nicole was saying or particularly thinking on um, some particular days. Because I hear some people say, "Oh, that was that was really neat what she posted," and I thought to myself, "Good, I'm hoping to catch up with that uh, whatever she had said here pretty soon." Um, but just again, stay very, very dignified. As the Proverbs um, 31 woman is pictured out there in front of us, a, a mother speaking to her son who is either a king or going to become a king, spoke to him as far as what kind of woman uh, to look for that would be a worthy wife. Um, one of the things that she said, um, this woman that you are looking for uh, will dress herself with, with dignity and, and strength. And that was Nicole. I found in her one of those one of those women. Um, up up till the very last couple of times that she was in the hospital, um, and if you've been in the hospital at all, you'll get this. She she refused to keep those hospital gowns on. And you know what I'm talking about? The, the kind of gowns that there's just not a whole lot of dignity with those um, things on. So she would get up, dress herself. Refused to sit in the, the bed all day. She would she would get up and she asked for a chair to be in her room and, and uh, just remained a woman of dignity all throughout. Um, facing again, facing cancer, facing death, facing fear um, with dignity. So that's the dignified why the dove. Um, the uh, the morning that Nicole died, uh, none of us were were at all um, feeling like 
there's imminent um, death coming. Uh, and so I had kind of planned at church the day before, I talked with a guy, I planned to meet him about 10 for coffee and just fellowship in the Lord. And um, uh, before I went, I called Nicole, and um, it was not the same woman that I had, had talked to the, the night before in, in the emergency room. Uh, she, her words were struggling, and, and just I could tell that there was something not right. So I, I graciously bowed out of the meeting because I knew my heart wouldn't be there with this guy talking to him at this point anyway. I went down. I had about an hour, or so, well, actually a couple hours there, and I uh, met with the doctor just as I came. He happened to be coming or saw me and, and came to give me an update. Again, Nicole had us all convinced that this was not a death. We're just gonna we're just gonna get through this and. Um, uh, so he gave me a little update, and in our conversation, I just I, w I was thinking through, um, you know, the, the weight of, of going through sickness, and I made the comment to this doctor. I said, you know, some people God saves um, from the fire or the, the storm of, of tribulation. They, they they're they're swept up and they're kept from it. And other others, they, he, he saves them through it. They actually endure it, and. Um, and I, I just remember uh, speaking to him, making that comment, and uh, so we kind of closed up, and then things kind of quieted down. And I sat with Nicole, and I just felt constrained to, I thought, well, I'm just going to read about one of these occasions where God delivered his people, um, just to encourage her. And um, I was thinking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He saved them, I mean, literally through the fire. Um, I thought about a couple other accounts, and I thought of Noah. I thought Noah was, was delivered. Um, through the storm, uh, the same waters that, that killed everybody else lifted Noah and his family and all the animals to salvation. And so I started reading that account, Genesis 6, 7, and 8, along the way. And um, I um, was reading through, you know, obviously, you know, the, the sum of the story is uh, um, wickedness is all over the world, everybody only doing evil all the time. It's, it doesn't, you can't get any worse than that. And so Noah found grace, Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord, and God commanded him to build an ark. Noah obeyed. He, he started to be faithful in, in, in doing what God had told him to do, build the ark. God collected them, um, the animals, brought them on the ark. Noah and his family, sons and, and their wives got on the ark, and God shut the door. And uh, began to rain. The waters flooded the earth, completely saturated and filled and covered the earth. Even the tallest of the tall mountains were covered. And everybody that was not in the ark died. And everybody that was in the ark was saved, was, was brought through the, the storm. And I was somewhere along in the story about here or there. And um, I heard the door open, and here was Tatiana. I had stopped by too. She uh, she came in, and so we, we started talking. And about the next hour, we just talked to um, one another and watched Nicole. And every once in a while, Nicole would kind of awaken and um, maybe say it a little bit uh, of a word or two and uh, then fall back to sleep again. And, and uh, finally, one of those times, Nicole's breathing got uh, harder and harder, and her heart, which was beating way, way, way too fast already, just went down to to nothing in about a matter of a minute or two. And um, we sensed she was falling asleep in the Lord and, and uh, was, was dying. And the room kind of swelled for a, a moment of activity with a, you know, a localized flood of, of, uh, of, of nurses and doctors ready to seek to resuscitate her. And, and um, the, the call was, was, was made um, not, not to do that. And so things um, then kind of settled again in the midst of it all. And later that day, I found myself in, at home, kind of coming to rest, so to speak, at, at our home. And a um, uh, couple of different conversations going on. But I thought, you know what? I remembered I was up to a certain point in the story, and I, I, was, I was curious as far as where, where I had been. Um, when Tatiana had come in and we kind of had stopped reading then. And I went back and looked, and here in Genesis chapter 8, um, the verse that I had actually stopped at, or had just gotten to, said um, that um, Noah had sent forth the dove out of the window uh, in the ark, 
and um, the dove flew around looking for a place to rest. The dove was, was looking for life, was looking for something uh, living, uh, a place where it could rest and um, couldn't find anything. The waters had not gone down enough. Um, and so it, it says there that the dove could not find a place to set its foot on the earth. And so it came back to Noah, and Noah reached out his arm and uh, received the dove back into the ark with him for, I think, at least another seven days. And so I went on the story, and, and it, it occurred to me that that was a picture of what Jesus Christ had done for Nicole here in the midst of that, that morning. Jesus Christ had, had reached out his arm, the, the ark representing God's salvation, Noah representing Jesus Christ, and him, you know, Nicole could no longer find a place to set her foot here on this earth. And graciously, Jesus reached out his arms and received her. Because at a wedding this last, this last week, um, and um, it, was, it was good to, to go to a wedding. And you know, I, I heard a lot of words fly by really quickly in the vows and the declarations of this couple. And, and feeling the weight of some of those words that are kind of skipped over pretty quickly, you know, in, in that context, which is, which is totally fine. But uh, at the end of the, the, the marriage ceremony, it struck me, the pastor said, uh, you know, Bennett, you may kiss your bride. And I um, never thought about this before, but um, it's like, Jesus, you know, Nicole is your bride, receive her. Jesus, you may kiss your bride, she's yours. And just very thankful to be able to release her. Um, just before Nicole had, had died, um, Mercy had her 16th birthday, and, and uh, there was a little party we had at her house on Thursday night and then Friday. Um, Friday night, Tatiana had just amazingly planned this great party with Mercy's friends from school, and so they were over kind of, um, the house we live in is, is, is actually a a rectory of what used to be a Catholic church, and so it's all connected, and the party was down and around um, through the stairwells over in the lower level of the church. And so we decided to go over and just kind of hang out with the kids a little bit, and we got to the top of the stairs, and um, I was helping Nicole along at that point, and uh, she said, just before we made the first step, she said, take, take my hand and hold my heart. It just, it just flowed out, and we both stopped. It's kind of like one of these... And she kind of turned to me and she says, is that a song? And I said, uh, if it's not, it's going to be one now. Um, and so we were able to make it down the steps and enjoy the party. And um, after the whole pass, you know, it kind of settled in. And I never really wrote a song for Nicole. And I was, I was feeling kind of guilty, you know, about that. I was like, oh, I've written lots of songs about lots of different things. But I don't really have one for Nicole. And, so I said, God, and, uh, I know this is kind of this kind of pressure here, but uh, if you could give me a song for Nicole, that'd, that'd be like really awesome. And so, in the midst of that next week, um, I reflected on this phrase that Nicole had said, "Take my hand and hold my heart," and I uh, started just kind of crafting a little bit, tunesmithing, and thinking of words and concepts and verses. And I don't have it done yet, um, but what I do have is, is probably a. a a little bit of a first fruit of that song um, that's that's in the, the little program area here um, and I, I do have a melody I'd like to try that out on you today if that's all right <laughs> seeing no objections <laughs> oh I do see one no Is that thumbs up, thumbs up. okay, okay. <laughs> I uh, was kind of writing trying to think ah, how Nicole is singing this song to me and you know as I was singing I, I uh, never written a song for Nicole and God said no. <clears throat> hey Tom you know uh, none of the, the songs that you've written have really been for the people that you've written about none of the songs that you've written have been for you the songs that you've written for me and that switched me from, from writing the song and singing the song from Nicole's perspective to recognizing I'm the one 
It's got Take my hand and put my hand. Psalm 16 says, at the very tail end, God, you have made known to me the path of life. There is joy in your presence. May your right hand your pleasures forevermore. Her being in heaven. 
Not really. I'm already looking forward to going to heaven also. What was I envious then of? It's the fact that he, she no longer needed to grasp so tightly to the hope of eternal life that Paul just talked about in these verses. Who hopes for what they already have? She is currently experiencing the joy of seeing the face of her Savior in heaven. For her, this particular hope is no longer needed as, as it has been fulfilled. It is no longer hope, but that's her life now. It was only possible as Nicole knew Jesus as her Savior and sought to live her life to please Him. For me, this hope is something that I still need to continue to cling to and wait patiently for, ultimately trusting Jesus to fulfill the promises that He gave to us. What I imagine now is that Nicole's hope has changed and that she is hoping that those who don't know Jesus as their Savior will accept Him before it's too late. She may well even now be presenting her petition about you to Jesus in person. None of us knows how long we may live. Nicole's homecoming was unexpected. Paul states in 2 Corinthians 6.2 that now is the day and time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. If you don't have this hope in Jesus as your Savior, will you take this opportunity today to accept Jesus as into your life and turn your life over to Him? There are many here, including Pastor Matthew, Tom, myself, and others, who would love to speak to you regarding this critical choice. After it all, it's God who holds your breath in His hand, He is holding out His arms to welcome you. Please stand and join us in singing hymn number 308.
Carlos, thank you for Nicole. Thank you for the good gift that you gave to us and her. Thank you for the vision and the prophecies that you gave to her for healing to go forth. And I pray today for healing over individuals. Pray for healing over marriages. Pray for healing over parent-child relationships. Pray that the ministry that you gave her just a glimpse of God would come to fruition. And we would see gobs and gobs and gobs of fruitfulness. That you would do your healing work, God, and your strengthening work. Bless us now, God, as we go. Keep us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You could ask the, uh, the ones that maybe helped uh, carry Paul, we'll, we'll uh, take her out to the uh, great side and everybody. Mm -hmm.